In this video, I'm going to explain how anyone can go solo in the Shattered Throne dungeon. I know for many of you, especially solo players, that seems like a hard achievement to get done. And it's also difficult to do this th dungeon if you don't have a fire team. But with patience and the right loadouts, you can absolutely nail this. Any person with any ability can finish this dungeon easily. Couple quick pointers. Um, in this dungeon, there are a lot of jumping. There's a lot of thrall. There's a lot of enemies. So I'd say take it slow. Be really careful about your jumps. There's a lot of those boopers, those taken boopers that'll kind of knock you off. So you also have to be careful about those. And as far as loadouts and builds, I'll link in the description to a build that I used on my Hunter that makes it super easy because again, this build allows you to go invisible, but also allows you to do all the, the great things of having Gathering Storm being able to dish out damage at the same time. It makes any of these dungeons pretty trivial. As far as weapons itself is gonna depend, I will go in through each encounter and talk through that. But there, there are a lot of ads. You'll have to think about ad clear and obviously boss DPS, mainly primarily in a couple of encounters in this dungeon. To begin with, you're going to go into a ascendant realm and you'll be going down a long bridge. Before you go through the door to get to the main encounter, you're gonna have some ads and a small mini boss that you have to defeat. Once you defeat that boss, you'll notice that there's a symbol that shows up. This symbol is showing you the next portion of the arena to go to. Now, if you look at this map, there are different encounters scattered all over the map that you have to go to. Every time you kill a mini boss in each of those areas, a symbol will show up and tell you where to go next. You must defeat each of these bosses in each of these areas, and then it will bring you back to the main room where you'll find you'll defeat the final boss in this area before you can go through to the rest of the dungeon. Again, not too terribly difficult. This part actually takes longer than some of the other parts of the dungeon, and there are chances for, again, falling off and being careful there's a lot of snipers so as you're going through this you're going to want to make sure you can take out snipers so something like either a sniper rifle or a long scout rifle will be really really useful here because they're difficult to reach otherwise as far as the enemies as long as you're using a build that does decent ad clear you should be fine and then doing something that just burns down a boss uh, what i used here is i either used in my runs i either use thunderlord or something like acreus because again um, I was primarily working on an arc build, but you can use other things. I like machine guns because they do help with ammo economy. Once you complete that, you're going to move around through the, the maze, basically, and you're going to run into an area where you have to basically go down. Once you go down this area, you're going to see a constant run of ads. Now, my recommendation personally is to try to get through this as quickly as possible. Don't worry about killing the snipers and things like that. If you're using my build, use your invincibility, kind of get through the map, and then once you're through the main part of the map, you'll you'll start to go towards an area where there's like a door where you have to go in and face some other enemies. At that door, there are some larger enemies. I would go ahead and take those out because they can mess you up otherwise as you're trying to get in the door. You can also use them to help you become invisible if you'd like to do that. So take those enemies out and then go through the door into the main area. Now here, you'll have a lot of snipers, you'll have a lot of enemies. Again, if you're using my build, it'll be pretty trivial because you can basically go through Use your melee to take out one of the enemies without having to use any weapons or ammo or anything like that. And then you'll be invisible then to go to take the next enemy. So I basically just did that, kept running through this arena. And then when you get towards the back of the arena, you turn left and go up some stairs. And that's where you'll run into the next area. This area will mess you up a little bit if you're not careful. In this next area, you're going to find that you have these sort of almost tight ropey type areas to walk on and be very careful about that. And you'll notice that there will be some larger taken with little boopers that will knock you off. This is where I actually like Thunderlord quite a bit because I could burn them down very quickly because they will have a tendency to go and hide under cover. And if you're not paying it careful, they'll come out and they'll knock you off. So do that. And in my opinion, just use your longer range weapons to slowly work those things down. And then you'll notice as you're going forward that there's some areas that have like spinning platforms of black death on them. As you go towards them every time, a new set of boopers will show up. When that happens, retreat back further in the arena and just take that stuff out from long range. Now, some people can use swords and go on the left-hand side to skip through everything, but that is risky, especially if you're trying to go on a solo run of this. Continue in advance forward, being careful with your jumps. And then towards the end, you'll be you'll have to do, basically, depending on if you're Warlock, Titan, or Hunter, you'll have to do some longer jumps to get across to a platform, and then you'll be done at that point. The next area is going to be the Thrallway, and some of you might recognize this if you used it to kind of farm for XP or farm for other things or even to, to level up Catalyst or things like this. The one thing about this area is that 
when you're going through it, you'll be slowed and unable to jump and you'll be able to, you'll move a lot slower. This is a pretty trivial area if you have the right items and weapons and builds like the one I mentioned earlier in the, in the video. You're just gonna need things that do add control. And again, with my build, it's pretty simple. I just use a melee, dodge, get my melee, melee back, and I'm just killing everything. One other er reason this area is really useful is that there are no rally flags in this dungeon. It's never been retrofit for that. So you want to make sure in this area, if you're running low on ammo, this is a perfect place to kill a bunch of thrall and get your ammo back. It's really, really useful for that. Another tip is that's why primarily you don't want to change the weapon loadout you have if you possibly can, because that way you can conserve ammo because you don't need a lot of heavy ammo through most of the encounter. Then once you notice that you're to the point where you stop being slowed, there is basically a like a, a bridge sort of area that you jump down from and then you're out of the area and you're through. Once you're through here, there's an area where you're going to, you know, jump and there's kind of like almost like a mini jumping puzzle with some ads at the end. One thing I would highly recommend in this area is instead of staying outside on the right, I would actually recommend going inside the building on the left. There is some taking goo that can hurt you. But the cool thing here is even though there's enemies, you don't have to worry about boopers. Don't get me wrong. You can successfully get out without that, but it just, in my mind, it makes it a lot easier. So this next encounter is Vorgeth, once you jump down. And one of the things about Vorgeth that's that's really key is that there's not a ton of cover here. That's why an invisible build, like the one again, and I know I keep reiterating this, like the one I've used, really comes in handy. You don't need it necessarily. There are other ways you can do it. You can try to use your Warlock and do Devour and get a lot of healing. But again, being invisible really helps because if things can't see you, they can't kill you. So the key to this encounter is that there's four wizards with Thrall that you have to kill. And each of those wizards drops a ball that basically, as you, it has a timer on it. As you get each, uh, each of those, it will actually increase the damage that you do to the boss. Now, since there's no cover, going invisible, like I've mentioned before, really makes this trivial. You go in, you punch the ads, you keep punching ads in an area, and then go ahead and take out the wizard. Now, when you take out the wizard, it's gonna drop the ball with a timer. At that point, sprint, and again, if you use my build, you can be amplified so you go really quickly. Sprint to the next area, do the same thing. Keep going around the four corners of the encounter and keep killing all the wizards. Again, this buff lasts for 45 seconds, so you do have some time. Continue to go around and grab that buff. And again, every time you pick it up, it resets it to 45 seconds. Once you have all four, there's a place in the middle of the room that will allow you to take the immunity shield off and then you can do damage. Now, again, damage depends on what you want to do. Um, you know, using machine gun really helps actually, like I use Thunderlord here, because as you're doing damage to the boss, as, uh, he will later on shoot bolts at you, Axion bolts, and with a machine gun, you can easily take those out while you're doing damage. So that's why I use Thunderlord here. I also used my super. So again, if you have a burst super, try to do that, do extra damage, cycle through that, if you don't get in the first go, then you have to go again. You do have a limit of four shots where you can do that, which is still plenty of time because that's a quarter each time. And honestly, with the way things are these days, with most weapons you have, you should be able to easily one or two phase him. The other thing you can do if you're really being you know, adventurous is you can try to use Lament or Swords on him. That does work really well. But again, with the Axiom Bolts and things like that, that's a pretty risky endeavor. At this point, you're going to... Uh, you're all, you're going to continue to go up towards the final boss. You'll find some throwaway sort of area like you found before. You'll find some boopers. You'll find different um, elevators. I'm not going to guide you through all of that. Just be careful. And towards the very end, you're going to go on the left side of this area that has a bunch of boopers um, that have ads on it too, which is really annoying. Again, just take it slow. Be careful. If you can be invisible, that really helps with that because the ads can't find you. Okay, so now you're at the final boss, you're at Dolan Karo. So this is a little bit different. You're going to see, when you get in there, you're going to see three kneeling knights. And those are the knights that have a ton of damage, but you have to kill them to be able to do damage to the boss. 
So get in there and you're gonna see ads. You're gonna see small taken form on the left and right. They aren't that bad, but if you let them get out of control, they can take over the arena. So try to burn them down as much as possible. Again, with my build, it makes it easy. You can also use Wither Horde. Wither Horde actually works really good here. Once you have that, then continue to take the da damage off on those knights. The knights, once their heads get popped off, as when they get to a third, they will start to speed up and go after you. So try to time it where you take most of them down to third and then burn them down at the end. The reason you need to do this is they, they again, drop a buff just like you had earlier in the dungeon. This buff times three does an enormous amount of damage to Dolan Caro. So before you take Dolan Caro, make sure you do that. So once you do that, you pick those three up, start doing um, damage on Dolan Caro. Use your supers, use your heavy. If you do it in one phase, that's great. That actually works really well and you're done. If you don't for some reason, if you have some damage left or if a shield goes back up, at that point, what you're gonna do is a couple things. You're gonna to wanna to go in the middle of the room. In the middle of the room, there is a uh, little platform that you go on and you can despawn that buff. If you let that, that buff go to zero, it'll actually kill you. So if you start turning like purplish and seeing that, make sure you do that. Once you do that, then you'll notice the crystals that will spawn in the room. They'll be in the middle right or left. You can use the cover in the back to take those crystals out. Once you take those crystals out, that will allow you to again do damage. Now, again, depending on what you're doing, you might still have knights up, you might take those out. Some of the ads may respawn, but again, same sort of thing. Kill the ads, kill the knights, get the buffs, and, and take Dolan Curra down. At that point, you don't have the counter, and you finish the Shattered Throne. Again, especially now that we've been power crept a little bit, this is a much more a much easier dungeon than it used to be. And using some of the builds and techniques I talked about, you'll be able to easily finish it solo. I mean, once you get proficient at this, you can probably do this in under an hour. It is not really that hard. So if you're if you're concerned about going in and doing a dungeon, this is actually one of the better ones to try. The only trick with this is you do have to be careful and take it slow in some areas because there are things that will knock you off, but the ads, the bosses really aren't that bad. That's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord. I'll see you guarding to the tower.